a school that has no mascot and no colors, but an incredible history. Storer College, we see you. What up, y'all? It's time for another 100 Days PCUs in 100 Days. Powered by the number one mobile reader for the culture, the underrated report. Link is in the bio. And today is all about Storer College. Black history is more than a month. It's a truth. And that's why we made these I Am Black History hoodies. To let people know that our stories are still being written and they will not be hidden. So if you want to get one, tap the link in the bio. Grab one for you and your friend. Storer began 1865. Founded by Nathan Cook Brackett. Sponsored by the New England Free Baptist and the Freedmen's Bureau. Free Baptist called Storer their greatest success. It was the first black school for ex-slaves or freeborn that was more than a one room, one teacher, ungraded operation. And in West Virginia, there really weren't many of those at the time. The US Congress gave them four buildings that had been previously used for the former Harpers Ferry National Armory. And this is a town where people have said that the end of slavery actually began. Named after John Storer, a businessman from Maine who provided a large matching grant which was instrumental in the school being founded. Sometimes white students would even study alongside the black students, which was at the time prohibited by the state law. It's almost impossible for us to understand how revolutionary the school was. Just a few years earlier, education of slaves was potentially a capital offense in Virginia. And it's not historically black in the sense that we're used to, but it was overwhelmingly black. And in the 1910 advertisement they reproduced, it said that the the school was described for colored students. It's the center of the growing protest against the Jim Crow movement. Matter of fact, this group called the Niagara Movement, which was the predecessor to the NAACP, had their first American meeting here at Stoyer in 1906. Harper Ferry residents were not pleased and they tried everything in their power to shut this school down from slander to vandalism to political things. Matter of fact, even in 1923, the Klan marched past the college. At one point, teachers required a military escort to get to school. But even with all that, some of the modern scholars say that this was actually a reconstructed plantation where students were taught that they should ethics themselves. The school at one point had a modern minstrel company which performed plantation songs and melodies. Which is even weirder because in 1881, Frederick Douglass was one of the trustees on the school's board. It was all over the place. And John Brown's Fort, if you don't know, you gotta know this. It's the main symbol for the end of slavery in the United States. It was actually located on Storrs campus where it was used as a college museum. The campus is now part of Harper Ferry National Historical Park because in June 1955, it was officially closed due to financial reasons. This is part of the history we gotta keep alive. Shout out to you, Stora College, we see you. And thank you for your time and attention. As a reward, we'd like to give you a free copy of the Underrated Report with more dope stories just like this. Tap the link in the bio, tap the picture, drop your email, we'll get it to you as soon as we can. Don't forget that black education is black excellence. So let's keep it going. Who's next?